Last time, Mark and the Ghouls raced against the clock to finish up their last minute tasks, including the disassembly of a 1973 Challenger to convert it to a Hell Crate Hemi. After returning from Little Creek Casino's Cruise at the Creek car show, the Ghouls wrap up the 1970 Lemon Twist Roadrunner to reveal it to its eager owners. What if it's disappointing? Yeah. They're coming to get you, Barbara. The unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman. And together we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. great time up at Little Creek. They roll out the carpet for you, make you feel like a celebrity, which is just ridiculous because we're just a bunch of car guys. The thing about the guys going up is I think they end up having as much fun as I do because not just because they treat you so well there, but the fans, everybody just really loves our little show and they love the cars and it's, it's just amazing for me to be able to sit back and look and at no time is Will alone or Dave or Royal. I mean, they got crowds around them and people hanging out. And, it's fun for me because I look back and I think, well, you know, I kind of created this whole thing and uh, now here it is, a thing, right? There's people all over the world that watch what we do and I appreciate them as much as they appreciate me, I think. We took the SEMA car this year from 2016. Everybody loved it. It was a big hit. Tons of fans, tons of pictures, tons of autographs. Nice dinners and it was just an amazing time and can't wait to go back next year. Just like last year, I have been asked if I will judge the best Mopar in show. I kind of feel bad a little bit for the people that have the cars there. A lot of great people, a lot of really cool Mopars, but very, very few are really OEM correct, and everybody knows that's my thing. So I have to put on these different kind of glasses when I'm looking at their cars and say, okay, just follow the sheet. Paint condition, overall, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, you know, I want to give it a one because it's not OEM, but I can't, it's paint condition interior condition, under the hood, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's difficult for me because again, it's not my cup of tea, but it's an honor to be able to do it. And again, there's a lot of neat cars this year. There was a ton, maybe 60 or 70 Mopars to choose from. And I only get to pick one as the best Mopar at the show. So I did that. So the car I ended up selecting, again, there were a lot of great cars there, a lot of really cool people, but 1971 Dodge Charger. Okay, a lot of people aren't huge fans of that generation. That's the third generation Charger. I happen to like them. This one was the Epi 5 Rally Red, 440 four barrel, so it's the 440 Magnum, but it was a true, real four-speed car. So they only made 332 of those. But the body, the paint, the presentation, it, it, I just happened to get lucky that an OE car did happen to nudge out the rest of the cars for quality fit, finish, glass, chrome, and all that stuff. Beautiful car, uh, didn't get a chance to meet with the owner at all on it. I met almost everybody else out there, so, because I would have probably tried to buy it. Just saying I like that car, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so last year, I picked a beautiful 68 Chevy Stepside. I met the painter, met the owner. He did a tremendous job on it. So when we got back there this year, the same truck was there. So I already knew that that would be the top truck to beat. So you have a couple hours to kind of go through, and we went through, looked at a bunch of beautiful cars, and there was a couple of closed ones, but we went with the same one as last year, and it was a deserving uh, truck in color. When you have so many cars to look at in a small amount of time, uh, all these cars are outside on a parking lot. So it's what I do is I just kind of walk down to each aisle and I follow the white reflection of the white lines up onto the side of the car. So if I can walk by and I can see a perfect reflection of the stripe from the ground to the side, I know it's worth looking at. If it has any wobbles or it looks like crap in the reflection, I just go by. Had a lot of fun, had a lot of fun, good times. Probably won't have us back up there the next time, I don't know, we'll see. You know, maybe next time I'll bring my own golf cart, right? Put a Hemi in it, ha <laughs> ha. Thing got a Hemi in it? Yeah, got a Hemi in it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs>
and I'm I think we'll be going back next year to that. None of us like Darren. He, he was on the money for covering up Mark's face. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. You know, no especially way. when you come over here and you got Mark That's in this scoop of that. You, the cowboy hat? That's like somebody shot him with a strip watch. Punching there. So so speak speak of the devil. The signal, there I'll throw you a line. The stained glass curtain you're hiding What's behind. Up? Never lets in the sun. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Only the good die young, Billy Joe. <laughs> Nice to see you show up late. Yeah, well, at least I know my music. Oh, David Day. Pretty good. Yes, sir. I got to get it going. I, much as I'd love to stay here and entertain you and do the next uh, section of the song, I've, I've got stuff to do. <laughs> That's fine. I'm very excited about the Roadrunner that's getting ready to be revealed to the Zinks. It's a neat car. It means a ton to those people. It's a very similar car to what he had back in high school. Those are the kind of things that I like the most. I don't, even though it's not a cubic dollar car, I actually enjoy the backstory and the, what it means to the people more so than the big dollar stuff and all the bragging about what something's worth. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very excited. You've got a Superbird almost done and ready to roll out of there. So would you focus your attention on getting the bottom side of it buttoned up, Z bar, clutch linkage, whatever shift linkage you have to do. I, I don't remember what all you had, but you had a, a little bit of stuff you want to do. So for me, that'll be top priority so we can roll it forward and move, work on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to finally finish Zinx Roadrunner. It's, it's so nice to actually have a lemon twist yellow car in the, in the assembly room. We've had orange ones, green ones, purple ones, so it's really cool to have a yellow one, but unfortunately it's gonna go away, but that means a new one's gonna come in. Alyssa, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the dust trail stripe on the Roadrunner. I'm gonna okay. do that by myself because time's out. Zinc's on their way. Okay. They're coming to pick up their car. I can't have any learning <laughs> curves, we'll call those. That sounds great to me. Yeah. So I spoke to the Zinc family and they're really nice people. I think that they're gonna really love their car. Uh, yep. That will mean when I'm done, there's some cleanup that needs to be done and a little brush touching, most likely. If we can get you to give me a hand with that. Of course. Uh, otherwise, you can just pretty much do whatever it is you do. Um, <laughs> I paint your cars. Yeah, I know, you're real busy. Oh, f yeah, the Zinks are going to be happy with the paint job. It came out great, just like every other car that I paint here. When I'm done, I want to get... I want to get that Challenger in your buddy and put a longitudinal stripe on it. That's the best stripe ever. I can't wait till we're done with this car. No. So I can I stop hearing about Darren. Yeah. Well, it used to be my car just for Are you going to wear a neck brace car, while you're doing it? Whatever. I'm at, huh? Are you going to wear a neck brace while you're doing it? Oh, that's Get a, a little shame. Pez dispenser that's a shame. that Pez No, I'm just going to put the decals on and you're going to help <laughs> you. You need to learn how to do it and do it right. Don't yeah. you think, Dave? Yeah. Did you see what they did, the two Dumb and Dumber last time when they were trying to put... I'm sorry. Will and Alyssa. Will and Alyssa. Enunciate. Yeah, yeah. William I think it had, and Alyssa. I think it may have had a problem yeah, with the teacher. Was, yeah. yeah. The yeah. billboard was. They didn't get bad. it off the table. Yeah. Usually you gotta get it off so the funny. table to ruin it. They didn't get it off I'll the table. About that. Exactly. <laughs> so is everybody crystal clear? Yeah. Crystal clear? Yep. Crystal. All right. Did you Red. catch my reference earlier? I did. What was it from? A few good men. Yeah. 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 You do whatever it is. So basically you have no responsibility whatsoever. Yeah. Right. Perfect. A few good men. You know what's cool about graveyard cars is people can watch so, graveyard cars as you and were, not even have to watch a few good men. I'm gonna get on it's all wrapped up. I'm gonna get on a plane and go back to my base. You don't need to. Thank you, you, sir. Colonel here Jessup, for you. you're not going anywhere, Colonel. Yep. A point. MPs guard the Colonel. What is this? What is this? I'm being <laughs> I'm being charged with a crime. Oh, that's that's fun. That's. I'm gonna rip the eyes out of your head and piss at your dead skull. You <laughs> with the wrong marine. Probably have to bleep the F thing a bit, <laughs> Colonel Jessup. Today, Alyssa and I are getting ready to install the V6W decals on the 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. V6W alphanumeric code for? Darren's car. No, I don't think they knew in 1970 <laughs> oh, that was going to be. Out. It isn't even his car anymore. It's his old. V6W <laughs> means a longitudinal white stripe. I've been working with her quite a bit on trying to make sure that she knows how to take this over. We go to put the decals on. I get on the little roll back or the little roll around chair, and I roll around all afternoon one and watch like you trial. put the decal on. Like a and we kid. hang out. And right. Well, I don't actually ever do anything. We're I just watch you. Put them on. Let's put these mother biscuits on. <laughs> Stay tuned. Mark and Alyssa finish applying the decals to the 1970 Plum Crazy Challenger, and Dave installs the Z-Bar and clutch linkage into our 1970 Tribute Superbird, while the owners await the reveal of their newly restored 1970 Lemon Twist Roadrunner.
You want to put this gel on the adjacent panels so when you lay it down, it doesn't stick. Okay. Let's pull the backing paper off. This part makes me nervous. Nothing should make you nervous. You should fly ice cold like I do. So all you're going to do is put this on there while everything's soft and easy to move around. Figure out where it's going to want to go. You do the door first because that's going to set your height on everything. So we got to do this basically five more times? Well, no, the decal's going to jump on all by itself, actually. I just, just talked just? to it earlier. It didn't want to, but I said, look, Alyssa needs to go. She's got to go eat at lunchtime, so she's going to want you to just jump on there. Wondering how much uh, time I need to block out of my schedule. <laughs> your schedule. <laughs> I love that. That's funny. taking the backing paper off right now? Yeah, you have to take the backing paper off to be able to wrap the corner. Okay. When you're doing a graphic that has to get wrapped around the panel, so like on the on the billboards on a 71 Cuda, it ends right in the middle of the field, right? It doesn't wrap the corner or anything. So when you're done squeegeeing it out, you're done. But where you have to wrap around a door jam or a quarter jam, it's hard to get that piece of it to stick down because it's wet, it's got solution on it. It doesn't want to stay down. So every time you press it down with that backing paper, it pops back, pops back. So what you got to do is take that backing paper off so you're just dealing with the vinyl graphic. That way, you got to be very careful. You pull that backing paper off of there, but then all it has is the weight and the resistance of the vinyl graphic. You can lay it down where you want to, hit it with a squeegee, and you're done. But if you don't, you'll be there for hours trying to get that to lay down. Oh, f you. Just f you. Ice cold, Dad. I am. <laughs> Seem like it. <laughs> Still riding it out, ain't I? Oh, you haven't killed anybody yet, I guess. Hold the door from being able to go shut. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to use it? No, I don't need Look to use it. Look at how easy it would be for you. It's looking pretty darn good. Uh oh. Uh oh, what? I love to have as much fun as the next guy. I think that uh, I'm, I'm known for a fun-loving personality. But if you're in the middle of heart surgery, right, you don't go in and do a gag on the guy. I mean, the guy's in there, he's got your aorta in his hand, tensils are all over the place, right? And it, things are touch and go for a little bit, blood pressure's dropping, you're gonna lose him, you're gonna lose him. So, I got a great joke for you, Dad. You're gonna love this, you're gonna love this. That guy dies, because you're in the middle of a dumb joke. Nothing? Yeah, nothing exactly. It looks good. There are three great comedians in the world when it came to comedic timing. Peter Sellers, inarguable. Chevy Chase, yeah, Mark Warman, so. You take these little suckers right here like that. Right now I'm working on the underside of our 70 Superbird Tribute car. I'm gonna go ahead and build out the Z-Bar like I showed you last week and wrap up the underside of the car. Okay, gotta hold those together and get them in the hole there and then we go. So it's gonna go through these holes and it's gonna catch that bushing and lock it in there. You know what I'm saying? See how it popped in there? So that's that side. Then the other side I already have, should already be on the bell housing, this one here. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put a bushing on that. I gotta take it back out. See that? Okay, we're gonna try this again. See now, I got a seal on there. Now we gotta try to get this baby locked in again. Like that. Then you know it's in there, because it won't go forward and it won't go back, okay? All right, so what I do is I stick it past, like that. Try not to drop that on my head. That bushing on there, like so. And you gotta do this all in one motion. Hopefully, if you get lucky, don't get your glove in there, like that. See, so there's that. And this end has a nut on it. Okay, so there's your bell crank. This is my clutch linkage hardware. So I gotta put all this together now. I run them down with the little lock nut so 
This makes it a little bit easier to run them down. Okay, now this little dude here has got to go in that hole. Then you got your washer on there like so. Then this dude will go in like that. And then that dude will go in like that. And you kind of look at it and double check your alignment. It's not bad. You may, it may be time for you to retire doing this. Okay. Well, all y'all's gonna do the next one, so yee-haw! <laughs> yep. <laughs> Zippity doo dog. This I've is doing him. the next one. Found the limit. <laughs> all right. So, this, just five more times, right? Yep, next one's yours. God, you're dancing with it. Well, don't be too smart ass, because you'll be buying the next one. All right. Oh, again with the damn cart. Why should we both have to be in misery? You okay in your chair there, Mary? Yep. I wanted to do this decal, you wouldn't let me. We don't have time to redo the car. Okay, I'll have that chair for a second. There you go, see? Despite Alyssa trying to throw me off my game, the 250 degree day, I was still able to get the decal laid out. It looks beautiful, there's no no sags in it, everything's hold down nice, it's, it's flat, it's straight, it's true, the panels are adjacent to each other the way they're supposed to be, looks great. So with that, I can move over to the Roadrunner. Basically, it's the same thing. Start in the middle of the door and work your ways out. It's a narrower one, it's a narrower graphic than the, than the side stripe on the Challenger, but it still requires the same amount of concentration and diligence to make sure you don't make a, make a mistake or, or have a problem. All 440s were assembled at the Trenton assembly plant in Trenton, Michigan. They all had the 440 designation stamped into the ID pad. Some of them had 440 and HP, meaning it was a high performance engine. And some of them had HP and the number two stamped into it. What did that number two represent? Did it mean that it was a 446 pack? Did it mean it was simply put together by the second shift of the day at the assembly plant? Or did it represent that it was a 440 Super Commando? The answers after the break. So what did the number two after the HP stand for? It meant it was assembled by the second shift of the day. That's it. A 440 HP and a 440 HP2 are identical engines. There's no internal differences, there's no external differences, there's no application differences, they're identical. The two is just to let the assembly line or perhaps down the road under a warranty situation know it was the second shift of the day that made the mistake. truthful. Matthew, what's on your mind? Talk I to me. don't know that you have legal precedent to do something like that. It's not exactly a parody, Mark. I'm concerned you, you may not You didn't like be able... it? I didn't? You that... hated it. Uh, I, yeah, no, I don't like it. DL? I just don't think it fits with her tone with the show, honestly. So, You sorry. didn't watch it, did you? I heard it. Looking at pictures of food? It's irrelevant. You know what? It's okay. That's what Graveyard Cars is. It's a it's a potpourri of talent and of skills, and if that's the way that it is, I'm okay with that. Yeah, deal. Just, I know you have ADD. Just stop. 
thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I know everybody's got a lot to do. I want to compliment you on the awesome job on the editing of the Generally a while back. Beautiful. Great job. Yeah. Matthew, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Christian? Kiss my ass. Kiss my ass. Kiss his ass. Happy Hanukkah. Okay. The deal is, I mean, the fact of the matter is this, all right? I do hire a good team, all right? And I, and I trust their instincts. But there's a reason we're on the map right now, and it's not any of those naysayers, okay? I believe that it can be done, all right? I'd rather be at the top of a ladder that I don't want to climb. It doesn't matter what the metaphor is. My point being this, I'm the El Jefe. I'm in charge. I go with my gut. It's my gut that happened to get graveyard cars on television. It's my gut that's gotten us where we're at. And it's my gut that's going to make those be the openers from here on out. So, well, I appreciate their interest and I admire their enthusiasm. I think I can handle things okay on my own. Colonel Jessup? No, actually, that was, uh, that was Tom Cruise. No. As you were. So I've got my 70 Roadrunner all set up and ready to go. I've got my graphics laid out. I'm gonna do my side stripes, which is the dust trail. I have Roadrunner birds, standing Roadrunner bird and running Roadrunner birds I have to apply, as well as the world famous air grabber shark's tooth that go on the side of the N96 air grabber door. Coming up, Dave finishes the underside of the Tribute Superbird before the owners of the 1970 Lemon Twist Roadrunner come to see it for the first time since it left for its restoration. Did you know that the most popular muscle car of all time is the Plymouth Roadrunner? Introduced in 1968, standard engine was a 383, 335 horsepower. Optional was the 426 Hemi, four and a quarter horsepower. Now, when it first came out, it was only available in a post. Later that year, it was available in a hard top. By 1969, it was taken the world by storm. It was Mopar's number one selling muscle car of all time, and it also garnered Motor Trend's car of the year also available in a convertible top. Now you fast forward to 1971, the Roadrunner suffered a lot of changes, body style mainly going to the new Coke bottle, but it also had a multitude of engines that were available that were never available before. So you had a 340 that was optional, the 383 was still standard, the 446 barrel was available, and the 426 Hemi. All of those except the 446 barrel and the 426 Hemi were available even with a three-speed manual transmission. Kind of an odd combination. Equally, the car also was only available as a hardtop. It was kind of interesting. It wasn't available as a post like it came in, so it was like a flip-flop of its original year coming in. Lastly, the wheel opening moldings. Couldn't get them on a 68 to 70 Roadrunner, period. 71, you couldn't get one without them. That's just Mopar. That's the boom chakalaka facts that old Mark Warman brings to you every week. So. Great, cut, beautiful, awesome. So far, the ghouls have installed the white longitudinal stripe on the 1970 Plum Crazy Challenger. Now, Dave just needs to finish up the underside of the Tribute Superbird before the team gathers to reveal the Roadrunner to its patient owners. So I've got my 70 Roadrunner all set up and ready to go. I've got my graphics laid out. I'm gonna do my side stripes, which is the dust trail. I have Roadrunner birds, standing Roadrunner bird and running Roadrunner birds I have to apply, as well as the world famous air grabber shark's tooth that go on the side of the N96 air grabber door. When the temperature keep, as it gets hotter and you're trying to do graphics, you've gotta be able to compensate for that. All right, you, you gotta know your limitations. Clint Eastwood, or Brick Ridge. And you gotta know when to hold them and when to fold them. If it gets too hot, you just can't put them on because you're gonna absolutely waste the decal. But as long as you're under like 100 degrees or somewhere close to that, what you have to do is you have to get a solution on there that's either thicker, like if I'm using the app gel, I'll put it on real, real heavy so I got a ton of time to play with it. Or if I'm using my soap, my soapy solution, I'll just add more soap to it so I even have longer for it to set up. 
because as you take away from those two elements, it dries faster. It dries too fast and you can't get it back up, you're calling Phoenix and ordering another set of graphics. If, uh, you know, uh, I love painting cars. I've done it forever. I don't do it as much. Will's a good painter. He's taken over. I've taught him how to paint really well. And, uh, and indeed, he is doing that. Uh, but I do love it, and I miss it when I don't get to do it. Graphics are great because you're an instant hero. You lay that stripe out on a billboard car. You lay out a big, beautiful black billboard against a silver gunmetal gray car. You're a winner. Lay out a black one against an orange, you're a winner. Absolutely one of the most gorgeous and quickest transformations of a car are the decals and the stripes. So I'd probably have to say my funnest part is probably doing decals. The graphics are completely done on a Roadrunner. There's always a little bit of touch-up that has to be done. Will's gonna come in early and do that. That's where like the head of the bolt that goes on the door that might've got chipped when you tighten it down. He's gotta go through and do all the brush touching, final detailing of the compound and the waxes that might be left in the, in the seams and the cracks. But after that, this thing's ready to be revealed. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Huh? Who the man? Who the man? Yeah, you hear that? Okay, there. Hey. I don't get what these are for. <laughs> hey. These are kind of cool. What's up, boss? <laughs> Doug loved this. Hang All on right. a second. Sure, it's a real treat then. Got some goodies? Come here. What you got there? Watch your head there. Okay, hang on here. This is going to be the opening I made for one of the episodes. All right. My dad has this idea as an opening for our show, and uh, he just showed Dave and I. Uh, I told him I liked it. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> and honestly, I told him I liked it, but I don't get it at all, so. <laughs> oh, that is great. That cool. is really cool. Right. You like it? But you know, it's, yeah, good yeah, job. Thanks, that's brother. awesome, Thank I can't you. wait to see that. It's, yeah, hey. good job. All right, Dad. Thank you. Well, yeah, that's that, gonna be really cool. It's not very good. I don't like it. He's, he's proud of it. Okay, so. what it's was that? It's cool, but I mean, it's, it's not so affiliated with. Well, I guess it kind of is in a way. He's I, I put his own spin on it. That's I don't know cool. what that was. Okay. I think it's neat. Back to work. It's different, you know. So You're positive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, I got one for you. True or false, the legendary 426 Hemi, available in 64, ended in 1971, was the largest engine you could get in any Mopar muscle car ever. The answer's coming up after the break. So true or false, was the 426 Hemi the largest production engine you could get in a Mopar back in the day? That answer is false. We're talking about cubic inches here. The Hemi was only 426 cubic inches. The 440, by its definition, is 440 cubic inches, making it the largest cubic inch engine. Pound for pound, size for size, the 426 Hemi is much larger than the 440. But that wasn't the question. Okay, there's that. I'll grab my clip. I'm still working on the underside of our 70 Superbird Tribute car. I'm gonna go ahead and build out the rest of the clutch linkage and uh, get that speedometer cable installed. Kind of wiggle them around and wiggle the rod, then they pop in there like that. See that? So that keeps that on there. So now we're all set on that. Once I get my upper rod in, whenever you push the pedal in, it'll pull that down and activate that and disengage your clutch. This here will allow for my clutch adjustment. So, we'll get all that set up afterwards. Let me get my spring on there. And that'll actually hold this together and keep that from rattling. Uh, right now, I'm getting ready to install the reverse lockout linkage. This is pretty much the whole brains of the operation. What happens is this goes in the frame here, bolts to that, and that piece goes through there. So what we're gonna try to do is feed it this way, if we can, like that. 
that'll go in there like that. That'll go up here like this. You can see this is a lot easier to put in with no exhaust pipe in your way. Which is this dude right here. The reverse lockout linkage is a safety feature in these 1970 model cars. You actually have to have the car in reverse to remove the key out of the steering column. That takes care of all that reverse lockout. Cool, man. That's done, that's done, that's done. Get out my speedometer cable there. This is great, too, because it comes with the, the grommet. A lot of them, when you order the speedometer cable, doesn't come with that dude right there. So it's nice having this one come with the grommet. Gotta be pretty safe like that. There, perfect. See that? Fuel line, vapor line, all hooked up. Brake lines, all hooked up. I want to come back through here and see how I slide these through. I get all this gummy stuff on there. Go in here and this should take all this off. Just takes a little doing, but clean them all up because I want the car to look perfect. This here. Well, I got my Z-Bar installed, all the clutch linkage. Also got speedometer cable installed. So now I just got a few more touch-ups and I'll have the underside of this car wrapped up. And there's the Zinks right there. The Zinks are really nice folks. I've met them a few times over the last few years uh, while we're working on their car. It's a happy looking crowd right there. Hi, Hello. how are Haven't you? Haven't seen you in a long time. How are you? Good, we're nice excited. Shelly, good. Terry, uh, the husband, he's a big time car lover and uh, the wife just is as sweet as can be. So it's gonna be nice to see him again. Yep. Yeah, and then we have our nephew and his wife and uh, their daughter visiting and so we Aww, brought them with us so up at cool. this first time up to Oregon. So, so you belong to these two? Yes. Oh, very nice. Yes. <laughs> so car reveals are my favorite part of our job. We work all year to see the client's face when we give the car back. So it's our motivation behind what we do and it's the big payoff for us. So I can't wait to see their face when we give their car back. We'll see if we can make some smiles and I think you can. Maybe a tear or two. Yeah. I hope so, yeah. People love crying. You guys, all love yeah. when they cry, right? Uh, it's always exciting when customers come to pick up their car. You know, the anticipation of what the car looks like. I don't think they've come out to really check on it at all. They're fairly local, so it's only a couple hour drive from where they're coming from. But I'm excited for them to get here, check out the car. Uh, the paint job, you know, it's just like every other one. It's gorgeous. The car looks good. It's a nice sunny day, and that yellow is really going to pop. All right, let's do it. Let's head That's out right. that way. Willie, ha <laughs> I slipped the jab. I'm going to slip the jab. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, I don't get as nervous as I used to during these car reveals. Uh, I used to back in the early days, especially, honestly, with some of the old crew and the, <laughs> and the old team, because there were things that weren't necessarily getting done 100% unless I checked on them. But now I know we're at 100%, all, all cylinders are hitting, metaphorically speaking. So I'm not nervous about anything. I think that if that owner comes in and sees something that I missed, I wanna know about it. I don't want it shuffled under the rug. I want his feedback. And if it's negative or positive, I still wanna hear it. You got your magic hat on. I ain't gonna punch a man with a magic hat. <laughs> and a magic frosty and all that, Winterland. The reason we took the car on, uh, it means a lot to him. He had one very similar to it when he was in high school. Okay, so my question is, you had one of these cars almost identical to this yep. years ago. Yeah. When did you buy it? When was? How old were you when you first drove it? I bought it when I was uh, 18 years old. I had a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner, the lemon twist color Roadrunner, and she was fascinated by the car. She didn't particularly care for me that much, but she <laughs> loved the yellow Roadrunner, and so it was a way of getting her to uh, go out with me. We ended up getting married in that car. I was racing the car, you know, probably more than I should. And, uh, and the engine ended up freezing up on us. And we had no money. I mean, we were, both of us were just dirt poor. We ended up uh, saying, well, we've got to get rid of 
the Roadrunner because we can't afford to fix it. And for about 15 years, I looked around trying to find the car and I was looking online and I found this car. It had all the equipment on it that, uh, that our original car had. So I, I went ahead and bought the car and then we contacted uh, Mark and said, you know, we've got this kind of love story with the car and, uh, and we wanted to uh, find out if it could be restored. And, he uh, said yes. He said yes. And so that's what brought Just us. Just like me, I said yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we've taken a lot of steps on this thing to make it as original as it would have been on the showroom floor. I know it's not the same car. Yeah. But if you bought a Lemon Twist yellow N96 Air Grabber Roadrunner when you were a kid, this is about as close as you're going to get to it right here. Excellent. So I'm excited to yeah. reveal it to you. And I understand you're going to drive it home from here. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And he done. retired last week, so now. There you go. He'll be driving it. Yeah. <laughs>、That's、so I'm going to go get your car. I'm going to come around through there.、Okay. And、uh, just, this is your car. This is your time. This is your day. All right. Thank you. I love the magic cat with it. <laughs> All right. Got a magic cat. <laughs> right here. I am more than ready to、We're、see ready. my car. All right, guys, our childhood. <laughs> yeah. He's going to walk all the way around the building. You know how long it's going to take him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, by the time. Can you imagine? We'll be here half a day. I think we are excited to see the car. I, I don't know whether we're、uh, excited or nervous, you know. Yeah. It,、uh, What if it's disappointing? Yeah. I, I, I'm confident that it won't be, but you, you know, it's been so long and we've、yeah. been looking forward to this. You get that anxious feeling about how's everything going to be and what's it going to be like. So,、uh, I know both of us are really excited to, to see it. And drive it. And drive it.、Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It sounds so good. Oh my god. They have t h a big one. What do you think of that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> is that gorgeous? It is. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Pretty amazing, huh? Awesome. <laughs> it looks brand new. It does. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It is. <laughs> Isn't that just、oh, it, too thank cool? Thank、so、<laughs> I think it's just it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's a culmination of so many things to do this. I mean, the right team, Dave and Will and、yeah. Alyssa and Royal,、the、when he's paint here. t h e paint is so beautiful. Oh, look. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's correct、oh、for the、gosh. 70s.、You're、supposed to have a little birdie.、And、then the dust、That's、trail、right. yeah. ends into here like that. The、okay. thing that was most important to me in working with Mark was to be able to express to him the importance of this car to us. And the fact that we really were putting it in his hands. And I wanted to make sure that the car was done, it was done right. It's been great working with him. For me, the funnest part of any reveal is when I can take time with the owner and show them all the things that I know went, we went to a lot of effort to make happen. Oh my gosh. So, the original EPA stickers are in place, the original tire pressure decals are in place, all correct for it. Kind of overwhelming you with all the little details,、yeah. but they're our proudest gosh, point is sometimes、gorgeous. the devil's in the details. And... Mark was telling us all the details and showing us all the markings that he made sure were there. And... It's like a brand new car. It's like we're back in 1970. It is. Isn't that so fun? That's what I just love. I think it's such a neat thing that this is all fully functional air grabber stuff. The car was an air grabber car, so we put it all back on. It's got all your date coded correct original Gates hoses and replica upper and lower and heater hose. Your date coded third quarter of 69 spark plug wires. I just can't believe it. I mean, it's just, I used to drive it to work and I couldn't get it out of second gear because it would go too fast. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's so, it was so like, cool. And the air grabber, flame, why would the flames come out? I would do something and the flames <laughs> would come out. I don't think it was supposed to do、grabber. that. I was、yeah. like, oh my God. I think God, that was factory <laughs> option. You know, that's funny. I, I think what Mrs. Zink is remembering is it's true, it can happen. So, The way the air grabber is set up is when that door opens up, it's cold air going in at that point. Now, if your timing isn't set just right and you get that burst of cool air and you're stepping on the gas, when that air grabber opens up, it can cause it to what we call sneeze. Kind of a quick backfire when it goes from the primary to the secondary side of the carburetor. And it'll go pop, pop. And I could see a backfire or a flame possibly coming out of that thing. <laughs> Why would the flames come out? That's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. Did you add that? Why did the car burst into flames? I don't know. This is just so awesome. This is just so awesome. Take it out for a drive? Take it out for a drive. I love it.
All right. You guys ready to go? We're ready to go, Rock Mark. Rock on. All right. Making dreams come true. Bye, guys. It's like our honeymoon. <laughs> the sound. I tell you, it brings back a lot of memories. Drive like you mean it. Oh, I like the good old days. I know, yeah. Feels good. Gosh, it runs great. Wow, it, it really does. Oh my gosh, worth the wait. Yeah. So everything turned out great, uh, Dave. I think the yeah. folks with the Plymouth Roadrunner, the Zinks, are extremely happy. Yeah, what a say? great, what a great family. Yeah, they were they were super excited. Nice couple. Oh. They, when they took off on the car drive, they were gone forever. At first, yeah. I, I always panicked when it broke down, <laughs> but he just wanted to go drive the hell out of the car, and yeah. that's what he did. I thought it was, it was really neat. Should we try the ag Do you air like grabber? This? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put up the air grabber. See how that works. There Here it, it goes. is. <laughs> I want to see flames. When can you punch it? <laughs> I want to punch it. I'm going to punch it. <laughs> the car is so awesome. It's better than what we thought we were yes. going to. It feels tight. The suspension's great. I got to drive it. She got to drive it, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if I can do this. Now she decided maybe we should uh, renew our vows and uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> do it all. It was so much fun. Oh my gosh, I got it down. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. I know. <laughs> well, you know, it's really easy to shift with this pistol. I know. Okay, now. Well, you know. always liked that in the other one. Yeah, I did. Well, there's no place to turn around. <laughs> Too bad. We'll just have to keep going. Just have to keep going. The car looks great. Drives great. We look great in the car. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> look at this. Look at this. What a cute couple. You know, if there's any coyotes on the way back to Bend, yeah, uh, watch out. We're going to be able to outrun them. <laughs>I personally couldn't be more pleased with it, but this means a lot to both of us. And I thank Mark and, and, his, team. Uh, and his team. I think they did an amazing job. Uh, our buddy's car got its longitudinal stride, V6W on it. It Mr. did. Mr. Darren, Mr. Chips himself yeah. got that car done. It's no longer his car. You got everything wrapped up, I believe, on the undercarriage of our Superbird. Yep, Superbird got all the clutch linkage in there, and yeah, the, the reverse lockout, all the goodies. <laughs> Alyssa's a pain in the ass. I don't know where she gets that from. <laughs> Are you having something to do with that? No, no, I'm not. Would you tell no, me? Not at all. No, I wouldn't tell you. Yeah, no. so that's, that's a brotherhood. <laughs> That's the brotherhood. I ain't, I ain't admitting nothing. Yeah, she was giving you a hard time on those decals. She's giving me a hard time about everything. So yeah, yeah, she's teasing me about being fat, that I'm old and I'm all these things, you know? Oh, yeah, hey, I was going to tell you, I'm sorry to hear about uh, the producers putting the kibosh to your uh, openings. You know, it is what it is, all right? That's, I hire good people to run my uh, show, and if they uh, if they say something just doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But you know what? That's too bad. I thought they were awesome. It's all good, man. It's all good. When you're done watching your video, come down to my office, please. We have work to do.